Ross, number two on the leaderboard on the left. As you mentioned before, basically now has his player's championship slot. Something we've seen out of a lot of humans recently is main deck Battlefield Forge and a sideboard, the right white creature lands, but Tom's list, 18 basic planes. Eric Hawkins of Nerd Rage Gaming. He and Matthew Tickle made a huge push in 2015 for the Players' Championship, along with teammate Caleb Shear. It turns out only Caleb made that final Players' Championship slot and actually came at the expense of Eric Hawkins, He's knocking him out for that final spot. He's hungry. And winning the die roll here. If you haven't watched it, this blue-black zombies deck is so impressive in the amount of synergy it has. But the question is, will it be fast enough? One thing that Eric's really going to be missing here, he has three sideboard Kozilek's return, but that's all about using the graveyard ability. He can't actually cast it with the lands in his deck. Yeah, there's actually so many decks in standard that play Kozilek's return without realistically being able to cast it on the front end. Mm -hmm. um, and that's usually okay, except when you're playing against mono white humans. Yeah, this is the matchup where you would want that. Expedition Envoy, the start for Tom Ross on a planes. So he has his two one for one. For Hawkins, he has his first two lands, no plays just yet. And looks like the attacks will start from Tom Ross's side. And a lot of stuff in Eric's deck is three or more mana. Starts casting Prized Amalgam, starts casting um, Haunted Dead. Right. His deck can be very much on the slow side. Without that Crypt Breaker or Jace Vern's Prodigy, he really doesn't have much in the early game. Right. Uh, Relentless Dead, he has three copies. That's another thing he could have had, though he's all on expensive <laughs> stuff. For Tom Ross, another Expedition Envoy and a Thraben Inspector now brings his board up to five power. With Eric keeping this hand, I have to wonder if he was aware that Tom is on Mono White Humans. Dark Salvation from Eric Hawkins. And this is a pretty good one, actually. At only three mana, he kills an Expedition Envoy and gets a 2-2 two -two zombie. Yeah, that's a good exchange. It's uh, two for one. He'll be able to either trade with the Envoy or just jump in front of the favorite Inspector. Was it Eyeblade Assassin? Is that the one? The Elf? A 2-2 two -two Elf for three. Comes in and it, it pings something. Anyway, this is a fancy version of that card. This is the rare <laughs> version. Go back over to Tom Ross on turn three. Though both cards are standard legal, I can see why Eric went for this one. Yeah, it was in Magic Origins. It's part of that Elves deck. <laughs> Thalia's Lieutenant here from Tom Ross. And he will swing just the Thraben Inspector, just the 2-3. Yep, with the Envoy being a 3-2, it's still just trade with the Zombie. So. Yeah, and then he adds Anointer of Champions to the board. That brings Thalia's Lieutenant up to a 2-2. Tom nearly empty-handed. So go to the fourth turn of Eric Hawkins. Cards in hand just isn't really the metric that matters for humans. Ton of power on the table. Eric has to get some more blockers online fast. And here's Haunted Dead from Eric Hawkins. These cards that are so pivotal to his recursion engine, uh, in this matchup, it seems like he's having to just cast them straight up. They look less impressive. Yes. Didn't have an early Crypt Breaker or a Jace, so he just has to cast these spells out of his hand. Going over Tom Ross's side. Three cards in hand. So Eric, I believe, does have a Voldaren Pariah still in hand, though it's unlikely he'll be able to get into that territory. Tom's going to go empty-handed, always watching, and Griff's boon, ready to serve a ton of damage into Eric Hawkins. So everything, 1-1 one, one gets plus 1, plus 1. Everything has Vigilance. The Anointer now flies. And we'll see just what's swinging. Wouldn't be surprised if it was the whole team. And for Eric's deck, going from this position, really the only thing his deck is capable of doing is resetting this is already having a Kozilex return in the graveyard and casting a Descendant Mind Meter. Well, that can only happen in sideboard games, and it's just very far from being this reality. I imagine that Tom's going to clean this game up pretty quickly here. Yeah, that Anointer, because it has Vigilance, that's such a good one-two punch. It can both attack and use its ability. Yeah, you look at his weapons. Voldarn Pariah looks great, but if Eric has to block away too many creatures here, well, then it's not—it's a no-go. 
Yeah, and anointer of champions. It's actually some technology that Tom Ross himself invented for the humans deck. Uh, after Max McBeady's Invitational win the weekend after, Tom had anointer as an addition to the deck, and it combines so well with always watching. So was it if Eric gets up to? It looks like all his creatures are going to hit the bin. I was going to say if he gets up to enough mana. He can haunt a dead a pariah into play, get three creatures. Anyway, Eric loses his board. The Expedition Envoy gone from Tom Ross. Eric needing a big draw. It's a land. Was that the thing he was looking for? Looks like it's Choked Estuary, though. Might not come into play untapped. Pariah just seems far and away his best weapon here in these pre-board games. Yes. He does have three Grasp of Darkness in the main. Uh, where they're not an always watching him play, he has three copies of Liliana the Last Hope. Yeah, and he has a prized Amalgam in hand, uh, so he could discard that to get back the Relentless Dead, get the Amalgam back. Issue is, a lot of these bodies enter the battlefield tapped, so they won't be on the ready to block on the following turn. Yeah, you're right. Eric Hawkins actually took, went down to nine on that last attack. I believe that line Eric's looking at here is potentially using a Jace to chump block and then hopefully be able to untap with Haunted Dead and Amalgam. Plays Jace. Two mana up. Tom will draw. Crack a clue. He's got three creatures left. He's had Hawkins down to nine. Here is another Thraben Inspector. He'll make a clue and more importantly pump the Thalia's Lieutenant. And here's Kithian, another pump on Thalia's lieutenant. Full speed ahead, here comes the team. And if uh, Eric was in it before, he's certainly not out of it yet. Or now, rather. Um, the Haunted Dead, the spirit token that it generates when it returns from the graveyard, does enter on taps. It can do some chump blocking this turn, though. Eric's just not putting enough bodies on the table in the long term here. Swing of the team. It looks like there actually is the Pariah in his hand. It's the last card. Be just getting three creatures on the board at once. That's going to be really hard. So, a chump block by the Spirit Token. Eric untaps. And he could have put that Amalgam into play there. I don't know if it matters. Yeah, it, that would enable him to cast Pariah and sacrifice three creatures. But and Tom then die. had. Yeah, exactly. All right. Tom had more than enough creatures for that to be a moot point. So game one goes to Tom Ross. He and his mono white humans deck up here. Remember, Tom, a top eight finish just last weekend over in Syracuse. Yeah. In modern with Dredge, the deck that he's running back. All right. So we're going to go ahead and look at the sideboards. We'll start over on Eric Hawkins' deck. It's the blue black, the black blue zombies deck. We saw some tools in the main. Voldarn Pariah, Liliana, the last hope. But I'm assuming he's going to need more based on how that, based on how that game played out. Yes. Uh, so sideboard, two negates, two duress, a transgress the mine, a ruinous path, two collective brutality, two Kalidas, traitor of get, two wretched grip, three Kozilek's return. The collective brutality are going to one for one. It's going to cost Eric two mana. It's only going to cost Tom one on most of the creatures he's killing. It's not very exciting, but it helps him get lower to the ground. Kalidas I like for the life gain alone. As for whether or not the Kozlex Return package is good enough in a deck that can't cast it, I think it's going to be a little bit slow here. Yeah, I don't think, I mean, what, he'd have to keep in Distended Mindbender to get it? Well, he can board in Wretched Griff and trigger it that way, but he doesn't want to leave in Mindbender, and yeah. the Wretched Griff isn't great either. Hmm. And it would only be two copies. All right, Tom Ross, an extra planes, a Stitcher's Graft, a Griff's Boon, a Silk Wrap, two Stasis Snare, two Gideons, two Repeal the Abominables, two Hanvir Militia Captains, two Hollowed Moonlight, and a Tandem Tactics. Hollowed Moonlight seems pretty excellent here. There's a lot yeah. of ways that Eric can cheat stuff in. The Prized Amalgam is the Haunted Dead, so that's a pretty nifty trick to have in your arsenal here. And I also like Griff's Boon a good amount. Most of Eric's stuff is on the ground. A lot of his best stuff in the matchup is setting up a bunch of recursive ground bodies, so the Griff Boon would enable Tom to punch through there. Silk Wrap also quite good. Exile any of Eric's creatures. All right. So players are going to get ready here. This is as our Season 2 Invitational and Season 2, and we can now announce 
the events will be having in season three. So this is coming up for the remainder of the year. Uh, after this weekend, we have our Open that starts tomorrow if you're in the area to come on out and play. But then we'll go ahead and move over. First, we'll go down the East Coast. So in September, we have the Standard Open in Richmond, followed by a Modern Open in Orlando. October, we move into the Midwest, where we have the October 1st, 2nd Standard Open out in Indianapolis, and then ending the month in Milwaukee with Modern as we go to November. And we have, of course, our Legacy Open of the season. That one's back on the East Coast in Baltimore. Before we go through the Middle West area, when the following weekend we have a Modern Open in Columbus, Standard Open in Knoxville, until we have our Season 3 Invitational that is Standard December 2nd through 4th in Atlanta. Now, Eric Hawkins, if you've just started watching the tour, the player from the Minneapolis area on Nerd Rage Gaming here on Black Blue Zombies, a 32-year-old has two open top eights, no open wins, but was so close to it last year. He, re he and really Matthew Tickle, as partners in crime, were big innovators of the rally deck in Standard last year, and then moved over to Obzon Company in Modern. I guess in that regard, it's not really surprising to see him be playing a creature, ba a graveyard-based creature deck once again. Yeah, one of his favorite decks uh, tends to be aristocrat-style decks. He really loves these decks that really muck up the board. So this deck is right in his wheelhouse, of course. His second place finish in the Open was with Storm in Legacy, uh, losing to Tom Ross on Infect. So I guess, yeah, some history between these two players in that regard, Tom winning that matchup. But what I like about it, we have a, a there are, of all the company players on the tour, he's one of the, the least fair company players. It's not just he's playing a lot of creatures. They usually are, are doing something unfair involving the graveyard. Yes, he likes generating a very powerful value. Um, this build here, the, all the sticky creatures, the uh, prized amalgams, the haunted dead, he's able to generate more value than just casting collected company and putting a couple creatures on the table one time. Choked Estuary from Eric. We go over to Tom Ross. Planes into Kithian. Last game, Eric did not have a play until turn three. We'll see if he can do one better here. If he's keeping a seven-card hand in the sideboard game, I have to hope so. Yeah, here's Jace on Hawkins' side. Game two, he'll be on the play. That will give him some extra leeway as far as what he can keep. Yep. So does Jace Fringe Prodigy. <laughs> can untap and clean up his hand a little bit. Kithian swings. Hawkins to 18. Tom with a whole host of one-drops here. We'll see how he follows up. We have planes into Thraben Inspector. And he'll be joined by Anointer of Champions. So triple one drop start for Tom. Pressure now is on Eric Hawkins. And he will loot with Jace. Has looks like three swamps in his hand. I'm curious about not playing a swamp first if Hawkins were to pick up a Voldaran Pariah. Discarding and madnessing that would likely be the play on this turn. Yeah, that's a really good point. He'll collective brutality away the Kithian and then play a swamp. So that one, one of the cards is out of the sideboard, will gain him two. Okay. Apologies there. Actually, no, it drains just, just, just the minus two mode on it. So it takes care of Kithian, but no life gain. Hawkins will remain at 18. Yeah, not enough cards in hand to just go discarding them for life just yet. I like the just yet on there. There certainly is points where he would do that. Yes. And Tom will continue to, to go wide. We see another one drop. It's Exhibition Envoy, then Thalia's Lieutenant pumping all three creatures. Hawkins will take four. With starts like this, you, you kind of wonder how humans ever fell out of favor. Triple one drop into Creature 4 and Anthem. I mean, we're now, short of the always watching next turn, but... <laughs> yeah. If Eric were playing a deck that was good at casting the front side of Kozlek's return, I might not be saying that, so there is that. So he has Kalitas, the 4-3 vampire with lifelink. He's really counting on this to not be removed. Yep. A card like Declaration in Stone... It'd be backbreaking. ...would likely win him the game, Tom, the game. And here it is. Declaration in Stone exiles the Kalitas. Gives Eric a clue token. That's not going to be anywhere near enough. Nope. Eric does not have time to go cracking clues. Tom 
I'm deciding if he wants to commit farther. He's got, it looks like, another Thraben Inspector. It would pump Thothalia's Lieutenant if he casts it pre-combat. Looks like he also has Town Gossip Monger. Yeah. It's not completely outside the realm of possibility that a deck like Eryx could cast a Languish here. So there's sure. a consideration for Tom. Swings the team after playing Gossip Monger. So everything's got a 1-1 one -one counter. We have, we're looking at nine damage, unless Eric wants to jump block. Because we know there are no languishes in his list. And this one looks to be a repeat of game one. Both times Hawkins on the play, but never able to get into this game. No. And that's uh, another thing about the languish dilemma there is with Tom's hand just being a couple one drops, could he beat a languish if you played around it anyway? You may as well just jam. In particular with Tom's build, back on the mono planes mana base, no needle spires to get a little bit of value there. Hawkins will go to five, draw and discard, finds a haunted dead. He'll go discard that. Can Voldaren Pariah from here? Yeah, on this turn, he'll have the ability to use the Jace um, to, say, madness out the Pariah, or even just use the Haunted Dead itself to do that. So what, we if, if Hawkins leaves up five mana, he can activate Haunted Dead, discard Voldaren Pariah, I like sack three things, maybe he can survive here. Unless you need to use the Jace to block, which given the fact that you'll have to be activating the Pariah, I don't see that being the case. You probably start activating Jace, see if you can find another prized amalgam. Okay, just for free, yeah. Yeah, and then set up Pariah, bring back Haunted Dead, activate Pariah. All right, Hawkins is going to pass the turn. His hand is two Relentless Deads and a Valdarn Pariah. He might be able to survive through this turn. It's, it's going to be close. Yeah, you know, he's on five. <laughs> All right, he's just going to loot main phase. Draws Grasp of Darkness. It's a card. Yeah, well, if he survives this next turn, he'll be really happy to have drawn that. Yes. Now, that's quite the if, but we'll go back to Tom Ross. And something I like about Eric's play there, he activated Jace on his turn, but didn't go for the Pariah, feigning a little bit of weakness there. Always watching and swing from Tom Ross. So it will be activation of Haunted Dead. All right, this is all happening pretty fast. So he activates Haunted Dead, discarding Relentless Dead and Voldarn Pariah. He manages the Pariah into play for three black, then sacrifices the dead, the spirit token, and the Jace to flip this into Abolisher of Bloodlines. So now Tom will have to sacrifice three creatures, and this is all before blocks. Yep. And then even with the Alvis always watching and some plus one, plus one counters on these creatures, six five is quite the size for a blocker. Yeah, Tom can transform his Town Gossip Monger if he cares to. Even still, it would just be a 3-4, and he's tapped out. Right. So, so I guess the worry would be if he does that, then Hawkins might let that one through, kill everything else, and then kill the Gossip Monger on the next turn. Yeah. The Gossip Monger would have to attack again, and he'd still have his 6-5, presumably. May not even be good. It's good for four damage, right? We're always watching. Anointer of Champions. Remember, that guy's still there and has right. Vigilance. Yep. Hawkins, it looks like we'll get four of Tom's creatures here. Tom chooses three, and then Hawkins takes one of the remaining two. Yeah. Did Tom have a way to play around this? I'm not actually sure. He, you see he just swung into it. No, I really, you can't just not attack when you're playing this deck. This deck is extremely one-dimensional. And if he just doesn't attack, then Eric gets to do all this, and he's not taking any damage on this turn. So Tom made the, th the Exception Envoy was a 3-2. He pumped it to a 4-3, and the Always Watching made it a 5-4. So that forced Eric Hawkins to block it with the Pariah as it was lethal. Yep. So you see Hawkins goes to 2, but he loses his creature, more importantly. Mm -hmm. 
the, the grasp of darkness that he drew last turn will enable him to clean up the rest of the board. Yeah, exactly. Both players have a clue token as well. Two cards down, Eric Hawkins' hand. He has gone down to two, facing down a lethal Thalia's as lieutenant. Well, thanks for always watching. Just about everything's going to be lethal. But maybe he's got, got it. He'll crack a clue. Yeah, Eric has to just kill everything from here out. Grasp of Darkness on the Thalia's Lieutenant. Eric passes. And now he drew a, pla a planes, but actually didn't play it here. Tom, Thraben Inspector and Expedition Envoy. Two more lethal attackers. Another pariah from Hawkins. Can only deal with one creature on this board. Eric doesn't have enough any other creatures to get to sacrificing. So we have, he has some Relentless Deads in his graveyard. I suppose those only trigger when they die, so they can't actually get those out just yet. Yeah, it's a card with some graveyard abilities, though once it's in your graveyard, it's not really doing anything for you. Eric will pass the turn. Well, Tom draws. I, I assume he's just going to swing for the fence here. Yeah, again, Tom's deck isn't the type of deck that just doesn't attack. Right, well, Eric can, he can do that same trick he did before, right? Haunted Dead into Pariah, and the Spirit Token and the Pariah will both be legal blockers here. Yes. So Tom's going to crack a clue. Maybe he finds a Griff's Boon. Maybe he makes this easy. Yeah, if he finds a Griff's Boon, then the Inspector would also have three power and could just trade with the Pariah. Exactly. So Tom swings, with, swings the team. Both are lethal. He just swings Expedition Envoy. Correction. So Hawkins will... Discard Pariah, Madness it, gets Haunted Dead into the onto the battlefield, tapped, and then the Spirit Token untapped. And Spirit Token will just chump the Expedition Envoy. I like that. If uh, Hawkins has a way to generate two more creatures, the Pariah can just clean up the board again. Yeah, Tom Rosso not going to make it easy on him. His play was another Thraben Inspector. But for Hawkins, he draws Haunted Dead. It's a huge draw for him. That's creatures two and three. He sacrifices them all, flips the Vampire, Tom's board is gone. Eric is swinging for six, and he has his first damage of the game. Yeah, and, and that's why you chump block there. That was excellent. Tom going to start cracking clues. He cracks a clue, now plays Knight of the White Orchid. That will trigger. He says go. That's another lethal creature. Eric draws again. He still has those haunted deads in his graveyard, two of them to be exact. But Tom's creature, a 3-3 first striker. It's going to be difficult for Eric to kill that one. Yeah. Uh, if Eric has no good spells, I imagine his play could be just discard his hand, get back Haunted Dead, chump block with the spirit, try to find a way to close this game with the Abolisher of Bloodlines. <laughs> Abolisher of Bloodlines puts Tom Ross down to eight. Two more attacks, and that one will be lethal. One more attack if Eric can find a Collected Brutality. Yeah. So Tom Ross, two cards in hand. He has a always watching and a Knight of the White Orchid. He's been swinging for lethal for the last four turns, but each time Eric has got just enough in the way of blockers to stop it. I don't ever want to hear that Voltaire and Pry is a bad card again. This is, yeah, it's, Eric has flipped it twice and he has needed it both times. Yeah, this card has looked excellent. Swing with Knight of the White Orchid. All right, what does Hawkins have? Discards his hand, gets haunted dead, the spirit blocks the knight. Eric having a dark salvation in hand, but because of that always watching, he doesn't look like he could do just enough. And now Hotam will play two more creatures. Eric actually needs a draw to be able to get through this. Clutch brutality. How good would that be? Just the, the deal two damage mode? Oh, yeah. Just that'd be the filthiest of wins right there. Vicious hunger targeting you. I guess Vicious Hunger only targets creatures, right? Who cares? Whatever. <laughs> you know what it's I mean. <laughs> Dark Salvation. Two zombies for Hawkins. Oh, that's three blockers. Three. And Taunted Dead is a zombie. So he will get to kill a creature. He'll go for Knight of the White Orchid. And now the question is... Does he attack? An attack here leaves him dead to Declaration of right. Stone. He's going to do it. Yeah. It's time to have Declaration of Stone. He draws. 
I think we're going I to game I three. I think we have a game three. Eric Hawkins evens it up one game apiece. This Whew. Zombies deck continues Whew. to impress. <laughs> my oh my. Just how we drew it up, right? No, <laughs> easy. Oh my goodness. Easy is not the word I would use for that game. Eric Hawkins evens it up twice during Tom's combat steps. He needs to hunt it dead in pariahs and flip them. And even then, it's real close. Used all of his cards. Yeah. Wow. All right, so we look back at their sideboards for a second here. We saw sideboard cards out of Hawkins. I don't know if we actually saw any from Tom Ross. Uh, yeah. I assume that Griff Boone is in. I don't think we saw that one game, too. I definitely on the play, especially after the way that that game went, like Tom bringing in Gideon, ally of Zendikar. Perhaps it's a little slow on the draw, but on the play, you know, in, in that game there, it certainly would have mattered a lot if he could cast it. He kept having to sacrifice three creatures, so a creature factory, as it were, would certainly be great. The Kaladesh pre-release is less than a month away, and you're going to want to find it at your local store. And with Star City Games, we'll be giving away one of our custom playmats, as we tend to do around pre-releases. The one for Kaladesh is the Bengali Rai playmat, of course, featuring the newest Planeswalker from Kaladesh here, with a little bit of an artist's touch to it, we can say. So this will be available at the StarCityGames.com Game Center in Roanoke, Virginia, and actually available now around the country. If you can still, as a store, register to host to get this as a promotional product and for a player you can find out what stores you can get this at at starcitygames.com slash pre-release it's a sweet mat fans of cats on mats will of course appreciate a cat mat so tom ross on fire once again this season from roanoke virginia the, the louisiana native so impressive just at these conversion rates, 14 top eights with four wins, three invitational top eights with two wins. Percentage-wise, he has been just the strongest player on the SCG Tour over the last two years. Self-proclaimed best GoldenEye 64 player. I might contest that. Playing casually, I actually used to play as Jaws. Most and people. He was, bad. He's, he, he was the big guy, right? He was, he was the worst character. Because he, well, no, he, he was like the strongest because he was the biggest. <laughs> you were using guns. <laughs> it's not a physical bout. Um, most people would go for odd job because he's shorter, therefore harder okay. to hit. But I played as a tall guy to show my friends that I was arrogant and was going to beat them anyway. I remember I always played as the Soviet captain guy, but then I learned that if they shoot me in the hat, it was a headshot, and I always <laughs> thought that was pretty lame. Yet, because he wear a giant hat. Yeah, so you learned early that hats are a drawback, yet you continue to live your life the way you do. Well, that's why my hat is, like, very close to the top of my head. You know, it's that. Okay. Because the general guy, he had one of those poofy military. So it advised yeah. you to go with a leaner hat that used less material. I don't want to improve my, I don't want to improve their headshot target. <laughs> if you get shot in the hat, you just, it's a one-hit kill. Right. That wasn't true in the solo campaign. Uh, no, if you shot the computer guys in the hat, their hat would fall off. Yes, which yeah. was less of a drawback. Yeah, and I thought, hey, that's kind of cool. But no, that didn't work in multiplayer. It would yeah. just kill you. Multiplayer never had cool things like that back then. <laughs> it was always just like the very basest game possible. Well, I was like, that was the first big multiplayer console shooter, right? Yes. I mean, there, I before so. then it had been, you know, you were playing like MUDs and stuff on... You could play... On, on, on well, PC. The shooters back then, yeah, it was like Doom and Wolfenstein. Yeah. Very different games. Tom Ross will take a mulligan here in game three. Mulligans are no friend to a deck that's just a bunch of Savannah Lions. I was really bad at shooters. I uh, The only weapon I liked, they had the... Uh, the mines you threw on the wall, they would blow up and people walked by them. I and the trick those. was, if you put them, ev if you like, memorize what the map looks like and you keep tracking your head of where they all are, then you, because I can't aim worth anything. You know, like, like I, if I see you and we start shooting each other, I was, I, I learned very quickly that I always lost when that yeah. happened. So I would just be like, I would just put mines everywhere and then hide in a corner. And okay. then, and then if you blew them up, I would like, sneak my way to where you'd blown it up and like replace them and then run away again. The secret to GoldenEye was that if you weren't using C left and C right, you were losing. 
If you weren't yeah, strafing yeah. and continuing focused on your opponent, you were just getting gunned down. Tom starts off six card hand, three of an inspector making a clue. Hawkins, a tap land. And he has yet to try to win one on the draw. Tom Ross's deck is one of the biggest die roll dependent decks in the format. Yes, absolutely. Looks like Tom with some sideboard cards. Hanbir Militia Captain and Hollowed Moonlight look to be as in his opener. Yep, both of them seem quite good. In particular, Hawkins' game plan has consistently been to do a bunch of haunted dead things in turns when he was dead on board if he was not able to do those things. So here we see the Militia Captain next to the Thraben Inspector. We go to Hawkins' second turn. Maybe he can do something like a Collected Brutality? That would certainly be nice here. Just anything he can cast. Yeah, just any Collective spell. Collective Brutality, Grasp of Darkness, even just casting a Relentless Dead to get on the table. All right, we do have Collective Brutality, and we'll see if he's going to go ahead and escalate this. It looks like he's going to. So minus two, minus two to the Militia Captain. And you know, if he picks the Reveal Hand, it's going to hit. He doesn't, he's deciding on his second mode. Yeah. Two life or Reveal. He's discarding Distended Mindbender, the Reveal, and he gets Hollowed Moonlight out of Tom Ross's hand. Masterful. He, that's so huge. He leaves Tom with a Thalia's Lieutenant and an Always Watching. Other potential hits there, Declaration and Stone out of the Humans deck, which is generally very good against yeah, Eric's deck. But how many hits, what is it? It's only instants or sorceries. This was, this was so unlikely to hit. Hawkins took a big risk, and he, he hit right on the spot. Yeah, and the card he discarded wasn't even a value card. It was a card that he's likely never casting. It was a Descended Mindbender. But it's not, yeah, it's not a prized amalgam. Exactly. It's not anything. And you know, he had a prized amalgam, but he didn't discard it because of this. Boom, turn three, 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 pass. Yep, and this is a big reason why he wanted that look at Tom's hand. Declaration in Stone would set him very far behind here. So Tom on the last turn played Thalia's Lieutenant, making the Thraben Inspector into a 2-3. Attacked Hawkins, down to 17. And now we see two more humans from Tom. It is, we have, for starters here, Expedition Envoy. It looks like Dragon Hunters next to it. So Thalia's Lieutenant up to a 3-3, but no attacks from Tom. The, he's waiting, his last card in hand is the Always Watching, and he's just waiting for the land and the green light. And like every other matchup, the ability on Dragon Hunter will not be coming into play here. We don't have any dragons? There's no, zom no, there's no zombie dragons? No zombie dragons. Uh, those are actually enemies. Zombies fight dragons. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going by Game of Thrones. I only assume that that carries. OK. No, I can get behind that. Generally, when dragons go evil, they're skeleton dragons instead of zombie dragons. Yeah, a little bone dragon action. Right. Distended Mindbender. Oh, wow. Sacking Prize Amalgam from Hawkins. That will take the Always Watching out of Tom's hand. Yeah, and because he knew it was Always Watching from the Collective yeah. Brutality, that was great. Tom will play Anointer of Champions and pass. So Hawkins is still at a very healthy 17, but there are five creatures in play for Tom. Yeah. You know, Tom is one Declaration in Stone away from dealing a lot of damage. Yeah, Eric has to start doing more than just having a 5-5 five -five in play. Yeah. Eric, Guy Reach Sanitarium. He'll play it, activate it. And Tom has no hand. That's oh, he'll mill Tom for one, yep. and he'll discard a swamp. And does he have anything? He's. It's looking like Eric Hawkins is doesn't have his game ender just yet. And Tom uh, flipped over a planes there, so that that sanitarium activation kind of worked in his favor. All right, Tom will crack for a clue, draws a card. It does look like Eric is sitting back on a Grasp of Darkness. So Tom's going to play as Planes and an anoint and a Expedition Envoy, but before the Lieutenant can grow, Hawkins will grasp it down. And Tom, a 3 2 ones of 2 3. There's nothing that can push through the 5 5 yet. Nope. So can Tom find an Always Watching or a Declaration in Stone? before, or I guess Athalia's lieutenant even, before Hawkins can find a finisher. And Tom's gonna start throwing some creatures away for damage. Here's a swing of all the creatures he can. Tom block, Hawkins blocks the Thrave Inspector. Tom uses any of champions and pushes five damage. Hawkins is down to 12. And I like the aggression here. Tom's deck is still Savannah Lions no matter what's happening. And he saw that Eric just took that turn, started by activating Sanitarium that suggests weakness in the hand. 
And it looks like Hawkins may have turned the corner with that spell. Dark Salvation for two. Puts Dragon Hunter in the graveyard and makes two zombies for Hawkins. Tom's going to need an always watching very quickly. Yeah, that three for one was uh, pretty good for Eric there. The draw for time surveys the board. It's 12 to 12. So if Tom stops attacking, then he's going to lose the race. He's going he's gonna to yeah. start chump blocking or start dying if he stops attacking. And he, right. doesn't, he doesn't have good attacks here. Tom Gossetmonger was his draw. Eric Hawkins. Looks like his hand is a Wretched Griff and a Swamp. So he, he actually has the seven mana just to cast it now. Nice. And that one will fly over everything here. If you wanted to, you could even start leaving the Mindbender back just to be really safe on the ground. Not going to be safe here. He, the safest way he can play this game is to get Tom to zero. He'll swing for seven. Tom I definitely takes it all. like the attacking with one zombie because the removal spell is going to be Declaration of Stone if Tom has anything. Well, what I love here, Tom took and went to five. And now Eric plays Wretched Griff. So there's three in the air that Tom can't block. Hawkins can actually swing the whole team next turn, and Tom has to block everything. Yeah. The Mind Mender will be lethal on its own. It's a non-issue with the gra Griff on the table now. Yeah, Kithian from Tom, he passes. Right, because he's taking three off the Griff. Everything must be blocked, and Tom has no hand. Hawkins knows it. And he's going to, this attack should just wipe Tom's board. Yeah. Just checking his bases, making sure he hasn't missed anything. But I think he's wrapped up his 8-0. Yeah, he has Guy Reach Sanitarium set aside. You saw he drew per Voldar and Pariah this turn just for extra value. But it doesn't look like he's going to need it. No, certainly not need. Yeah, if he swings everything, yeah, Tom has to block every creature. See Haunted Dead and Voldar and Pariah in Hawkins' hand? This is great. Yeah, those are solid holdings. Activates the Sanitarium. Both players will draw and discard. Hawkins will discard the Haunted Dead. And now, going to go on the sa side of safety, just Wretched Griff. And he'll just cast Haunted Dead. Sure, here's a so many blockers. Yeah. And Eric's still on 12. Uh, Tom doesn't even have 12 power on the table. Draws. I don't think it's there. Tom just counting to be sure. But he has five creatures. Hawkins has five blockers, a lethal flyer next turn. Tom's going to swing everything. This will flip Kithian. Mindbender in front of the 2 1. Haunted Dead in front of the Envoy. The Haunted, a zombie in front of another Envoy. Looks good to Hawkins. He'll go ahead and say, those are my blocks. Hangs back his spirit token in case Tom has declaration in stone for the griff so he can still fly over. Kithian's indestructible, so the trade happens. Haunted dead back in the graveyard. Kithian will flip into Gideon. Three creatures attacked. Wretched griff must attack Gideon this next turn. He'll pass. Yep, and with that spirit token, Tom's still on a two-turn clock, even with the griff attacking Gideon. Yeah, he bought himself a turn, but... Just that. It'll be Haunted Dead. Hawkins will Madness Voldar and Pariah into play. Uh, just kidding. <laughs> I don't think Tom gets that one turn he bought. Hawkins will immediately flip the Pariah. Tom will sacrifice his whole team. And there is the handshake. So it is Eric Hawkins, Affinity and Black Blue Zombies with the perfect 8-0 here on day one of the Invitational.